What's up guys? I'm Janigowski and would like to show you how to build a software from the idea to the working solution. In this series we'll build Mars Explorer, the application for Mars footage exploration. No pun intended. In this episode we'll focus on project structure. What's the idea? Some time ago I found a list of NAS APIs. One of them got my attention in particular. That is Mars Rover Photos. With this API we can explore footage taken on Mars by rovers. The API looks like this. There are plenty of photos, but unfortunately they are hard to read. If you want to explore those footage like the animation, we have to copy and paste every of the photo to the browser. So I decided to build the application, which is called Mars Explorer, to simplify this process by creating graphical user interface for all of those parameters which are described in this API. And it looks like this. We can select rover. Curiosity is the newest one, though it has the best cameras. Later we can select Sol, which means Martian day. And in the last step we can select camera. Great. Now we can see photos taken on Mars without copying and pasting those URLs to the browser. I've added also controls for speed control and keyboard shortcuts. And it looks like this. We can increase frame per second, so the animation is faster. And if we find something interesting, we can play pause with icons or with keyboard. Exactly space handle play pause and arrows are for navigating between frames. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to discover something interesting on the surface of Mars. And that's the final result. That was my goal to create minimal viable product. And now I would like to show you the structure with which this application is made. The application consists of four main parts. Mars API, components, pages and stores. Mars API is responsible for reading data from NASA servers and it's so easy that it's just a few lines of code and we have to just pass Mars API key and in the result we can read photos. Components are building blocks for our application so we can reuse them between pages. The index one is the main view with call to action button and photos is the most complex one view with selectors of rovers, camera and sol. Stores are responsible for state management of each camera and of each rovers. We'll go through photos page to see how it works and how we can achieve this effect of selecting rover, sol and later download the photos from NASA servers. First, we have to choose rover. They are hard-coded values, we know them from the API, there are no new rovers now, but, interesting fact, the newest rover will be sent on 20th of July, so it's a around three weeks and there will be a live share on NASA YouTube channel. When the rover is selected we can display the rover's controls and here we can see two containers. The first one is responsible for managing data for a specific rover, so we pass the rover's name and the second one is responsible for managing data for specific camera on specific rover. That means that we don't want to mix the global state for rovers and cameras, 
but we want to concatenate this name, like, it, like it's done here, to grab only state for this specific combination. I will show in details how it works in the next part. Now we'll see how rubber component is built. When this component is loaded, we want to fetch details of this rubber to set max sol, which means that is the slider on the first view. And after this slider is changed, so there is some value uh, with which we can download data from NASA servers, we can show the list of cameras, which are also downloaded from the Photos API. All of those data, like landing date, max, le max sol, max days, total photos, and list of cameras, are handled by the one endpoint photos. Photos component is responsible for fetching photos from NASA API. Fetch photos action takes rubber, camera, and sol, and with this information can download the data from NASA. And there are two loaders. The first one is responsible for showing the status of the request, and the second one is responsible for showing the progress of downloading of all photos for this specific combination of params. And in the result, there are two loaders. The one is the spinner and the second one is the percentage loader, so the user knows what is going on at every point at the time. If there is the error, we just want to show the regular container with error message, and if there are no photos, we just want to, uh, to, to show the message, no photos, try another camera. Later we have Carousel. Carousel is a complex enough component that we will go in detail with this component in the next episode. That's all folks, in my first episode, please let me know in the comments what do you think about this idea, what I can improve or what can I add as the new feature. Don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. See you next time!